In this video, we're going to show you how to set up and connect a USB microphone to your Rode Rodecaster 2 audio mixer. Now, there is a lot of information online, even from Rode's website itself, that says this is not possible. But we found a workaround, as there typically is with audio type stuff. If you think about it long enough, you can find a way to make it work. And we're going to show you how we would make this work to get a USB microphone into the Rode Rodecaster 2 in this video. If you are looking for links or pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we do have links down in the description below with up-to-date pricing from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. Now, there are three reasons that I can think of that you might want to do this. Reason one, if you want to add post-processing to your USB microphone, you want to add some of the effects and compression and that type of stuff that's built into the Rode Rodecaster 2. Maybe you don't want to use computer software or you don't have a computer available, but you do have a Rodecaster. This is a great reason to do that. Next, if you just need to get your USB microphone connected with other USB microphones, this will work for you as well. That way it allows you to use this basically as a USB microphone mixer and you can mix them all together. And third is probably something that a lot of people are coming with where they started with the USB microphone. Maybe they eventually upgraded to an XLR microphone with the Rode Rodecaster 2, but maybe they have an extra guest and they just don't have enough microphones to cover it. And even though this isn't the best solution, they can have the option of connecting their USB microphone with all their other XLR microphones. They don't have to worry about syncing it all up in post or something like that. So a couple of things that we need to cover here first before we get into actually connecting it. You do need to independently power your USB microphone. We're going to show you a couple different ways to do that. And then we'll worry about signal and setup after that. So to power your USB microphone, we're using good old-fashioned Blue Yeti here probably the most popular USB microphone in the world. It's outdated by about a decade now, but it is still extremely popular. There's a USB mini or micro on the bottom of this. So I'm gonna connect the cable. Now we do need to connect this to power. We're not worried about getting the signal out of the microphone with USB. We're just needing to power it. So you can connect this other end to a power block into a power bar or you can actually connect it to the back of the Rodecaster if you have a USB Type-C connector on the other end of that cable, or you can connect it to your computer for power. Whatever works best for you, it doesn't really matter. You just need to see this USB microphone power up. So I'm gonna connect it to the back of the Rode Rodecaster here. And to do that, you can see here, I've just connected it to the output one. I'm recording this video right now just onto the SD card of the Rode Rodecaster. Okay, so. You can see here that there's a red light on my USB microphone. It has power. That's step one. Step two is to take the headphone jack output of the USB microphone and to get that into one of your inputs onto your audio mixer. To do that, we're going to use a cable like this. There's probably a couple different ways now that you're thinking about it that you can make this work. This is a balanced 8th inch TRS to a quarter inch TRS. Now, it is a balanced cable, but the way that we're using it right now is unbalanced because we're taking an unbalanced stereo signal, left and right outputs of the headphone jack, and bringing that into the Rode Rodecaster. Because we're using this in an unbalanced fashion, because we're doing unbalanced stereo, don't run this longer than 10 or 15 feet. This will be really, really good for you know six or 10 foot runs. You might have a little bit of noise, but it shouldn't be too bad. You probably won't notice it. Um, but definitely don't run this longer than 15 feet. That's when you'll start picking up noise, hiss, radio stations, all kinds of stuff. So we're going to connect this to the bottom of our microphone here. Your USB microphone might be different. It might be on the front or back or something. And then the quarter inch end we're going to take and we're going to connect that to channel two in this TRS input on the back of our Rode Roadcaster 2. Next, we need to set up the microphone with the Rode Roadcaster 2. So I'm going to select the second channel. You can see I already have the fader left up from when I was playing around with it. This is how I would set it up. Put it on the dynamic microphone setting. Now, the reason I recommend that is very specific. The Blue Yeti here is a condenser microphone, but it's already self-powered from the USB power source. So the last thing that you'd want to do is send 48 volts of phantom power to the headphone output of a microphone. That's a pretty surefire way that you're going to damage it. 
Second, I'm not positive that 48 volts of phantom power would actually come out of the quarter inch output of the Rode Roadcaster Pro anyway. A lot of audio mixers will only send 48 volts of phantom power through the XLR inputs of the audio mixer. So that's something to keep in mind. Next for the level, you want to find a nice noise to signal ratio here. For us, the sweet spot was around 25 dB on the Rode Roadcaster Pro. And then you want to play with your gain on the Blue Yeti or whatever microphone that you're using to compensate and to find the sweet spot. The other variable that you have here is the headphone volume. So for me, what I would recommend here is that you set your headphone volume to 50% straight up the middle. You set your level to 25 dB on the Rode Roadcaster Pro, and then you play with the gain on the back of the microphone to set your final level. I'm going to move over to the Blue Yeti now. You're going to hear how it sounds as I set the gain and adjust everything. Okay, so right now you can see that my gain here is turned pretty much all the way down. But if we look over at the Rode Roadcaster Pro, my level here is right in the sweet spot, right in that green band. So that's exactly where you want to be. Now on the front of this microphone, the headphone volume, like I already said, is at 50%. The reason that you don't want to go higher than 50% with the headphone output is that headphone outputs are really noisy and hissy and gainy, and they're not going to be any good. In terms of processing for this, I would just copy the settings that I have here. But I do think that this is a totally acceptable solution that would allow you to get a USB microphone into your Rode Roadcaster 2 in a pinch. If you are looking for links or specs for all the cables and stuff that we recommend for doing this, we do have links down in the description below. If you have any questions about this setup, will it work for my microphone, just leave a comment down in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.